All right, welcome back everyone. Here we are again, taking a look at another item that came in Terraria 1.4.4. And instead of the informational testing kind of video I've tended to do, I decided to do an all boss video this time because that's what I typed into my content ideas document. So that's just what I went with, why not? The item in the spotlight this time, the Trimerang, is a pre-hard mode boomerang that was just added to the game, which you could obtain by crafting an enchanted boomerang, an ice boomerang, and a shroom ring together at a workbench. The Trimerang has the same damage as the ice boomerang and slightly less than the shroom ring, loses the debuff that the ice boomerang inflicts, but gains the ability to fire up to three boomerangs at once, which is a mechanic only seen elsewhere in hard mode boomerangs, which is pretty cool. This mechanic it makes the boomerang seem pretty strong in theory, especially for an item that you can get before even fighting any bosses. So let's test it out against all of them. Well, obviously not actually all of them, all of the ones that would be somewhat reasonable for me to fight with a pre-hard mode boomerang. Before actually getting into the fights, here are the basic buffs, armor sets, and accessories that I'll be using for the bosses which I'll be adjusting depending on which one that I'm facing. Most of these factors will remain consistent except for a couple of changes that I'll make where I realized I forgot about a couple of accessories and when I really had to try and adapt my accessory and potion set for the last fight because, well, I'll talk about that when I get there. Firstly, like usual, all of these fights are done in master mode and we're going to start off with King Slime. Of course, this isn't just a versus all bosses video. I'm going to analyze and give you my thoughts on the fights and how this weapon performs and for what reasons it performs like it does as I usually do. That being said, there isn't really much to say about this one which basically nullifies what I just said but it's King Slime. The Trimarang is a really high powered weapon for when you can get it like I've already mentioned and similar to most decent weapons at this point in the game, the big slimy boy stood no chance. The Eye of Cthulhu had a very similar outcome for basically the same reason that I mentioned for King Slime and with full HP, gold armor, and the accessories that I have, which are a tad overkill even in master mode, you don't take damage very often. When you do, it's not that much damage, and the boss gets shredded pretty quickly. Even when at low health and dashing around, it's fairly easy to hit, at least when we're comparing the Trimarang to other weapons of its type because of the three projectiles that you get. I feel like the three projectiles of the weapon have a greater effect than one might first think, or for a different reason than someone might first think, especially in these next two fights, which are the Brain of Cthulhu and the Eater of Worlds. I was pretty surprised at how well the Trimarang did against the Brain of Cthulhu, where it ran through the creepers that surround the boss in its first phase way faster than I thought it would, which comes down to a mechanic that all boomerangs have, where they don't have any piercing ability baseline when you throw them at something, but have unlimited piercing when they're coming back to you after striking something or reaching their max throwing distance. And because the creepers group and clump everywhere, and because there's three of these projectiles that you can throw at once, you end up having a higher chance to get them into positions where you can utilize this mechanic in the first place. There's nothing special about the weapon in the second phase of the fight. I was able to just brute force it pretty easily because I hadn't taken that much damage, though with the multiple projectiles, I think you could also make use of the adaptive movement strategy that I highlighted in my video, partially covering the buffs that this boss received that I made a couple of weeks ago. So give that one a watch if you wanna know more about it. The mechanic I just mentioned didn't work quite as effectively against the Eater of Worlds. I thought I might actually have a lot of trouble with this boss, but it went better than I expected. And yeah, it had a bit of a glitched spawn, but I don't think that it affected the fight that much. This was a drawn out fight regardless that mostly relied on dodging projectiles, making sure that there was plenty of space for me to maneuver around the segments of the boss and getting the occasional backswing for some extra damage, which I'm pretty sure is a golfing term and has nothing to do with this movement, but that's the first thing that I came up with to describe it. The interaction where the Trimarang just bounces off of the Vile Spit and deletes it felt kind of weird during the fight, and I'd forgotten that the Vile Spit had a hitbox that you can interact with at all, but it does, which is just something to be aware of when battling this boss. The fight went well overall though, and what is this skip in my recording, bro? That didn't happen in game. <sighs> Streamlabs. Do we have a talk again? Well, the giant worm was defeated and the queen bee is up next and the fight ended up being very close, which I blame entirely on the extra monsters that insisted upon spawning before and during the fight, which while yes, it wasn't the most masterfully performed queen bee fight, the extra hits I took and the space that was limited in my arena by said monsters most certainly could have really mattered, as you can see by how close the fight was. But you have plenty of moments to deal damage to this boss with a trimarang during the dashes and when it moves slowly or sits still to 
to spawn bees or shoot spikes at you. But as a boomerang, this weapon has a difficult time overall keeping up with the queen bee, which is one of the more mobile pre-hard mode bosses. The bees that it spawns also end up being quite annoying, but as long as you're focused on mostly dodging and attacking when given clear opportunities, it's not that bad of a fight. I mean, I felt like I did this fight like a moron and I still beat it first try. Skeletron was a weird fight and was the only fight where the return mechanic of this boomerang really came into effect. And I don't mean the unlimited piercing mechanic, I actually mean how the boomerang comes back to your character. Because out of all the fights, Skeletron was done in the most wide open space with a lot of lengthy running back and forth along the arena. And if you fight like this with a boomerang, at least the lower velocity ones in pre-hard mode, if you throw it out and are running the opposite direction, the boomerang can almost get stuck in the air as it's trying to return to you because of how fast you're moving and how fast it's moving nearly cancels out. I often had to position myself so that I wouldn't get hit by the boss, but also so that the boomerangs could return to me. And I had to be doubling back and stopping my movement much more often than I would with other weapons, just so that I could recover the projectiles and throw them again. It was extremely awkward, but I didn't have that much time to think about specifically how to use or play around it because I beat the boss first try anyways. I only try to take advantage of the stagnant position of the projectiles in one way, attempting to get them to run into the boss's hitbox so that I could get a burst of damage, which is very hard to control and use in a practical way, but ends up happening a lot in this fight unintentionally regardless. The Deerclops fight was very straightforward as it's just a ground-based boss that moves from side to side so it's very easy to land hits on. The only catch to that being that you need to stay within a certain range of the boss or else you can't deal damage to it, which doesn't really matter since boomerangs are generally mid to close range weapons anyways. The fight is a little long because at this point the trimerang is a weapon gotten at the beginning of the game that probably isn't designed to be used against bosses this late in hard mode, but regardless it can still get the job done in an amount of time I'd still classify as reasonable. Fighting the boss with this item doesn't have much to do with the item and is more about how the boss itself works, which instead of explaining all of that here I'll redirect you to another video that I've made about the Deerclops that should include most of the information should you wish to know more, but I beat the boss and the Trimerang is still going strong. Finally, we have uh, the big one. I think that's an appropriate title for the Wall of Flesh. I have a story to tell with this one. There's a significant amount of changes I made to my setup throughout the multiple fights that I did because I had to do more than one because, big surprise, fighting the Meat Man with a pre-King Slime Boomerang is rather difficult. First, I made a new world and added water walking and gravitation potions to my buffs to help me traverse the lava and large cliffs in the underworld without having to build a bridge across the whole damn thing. I'm now using Molten Armor, this is the only fight that I use it in, and also decided to use both the Brain of Confusion and the Worm Scarf, which I know is kinda cheating, but they're technically both items that you can get at this point in the game, so I just went with it. And spoiler alert, this was in no way overkill. So I put on my buffs, threw my little doll into the lava, and gave it a shot. <sighs> Four minutes of boss fight for that? I realized that this was going to be very difficult, which wasn't completely out of the realm of expectation, but after this first fight, I really was thinking to myself, hmm. Maybe, just maybe, I overestimated the ability of this weapon a little bit. But I wasn't to be deterred yet. I went back down, adding obsidian skin potions to my buff lineup because as you may have noticed in the last fight, it wasn't actually a vile tentacle or laser beam that erased my life but some flaming bricks. As well, I switched my frog gear with a stinger necklace, which should add a little more damage and raw survivability to my character. The fight went significantly better this time, lasting six and a half minutes, until I got killed by being smashed against the side of my small world. Son of a bitch! Turns out, I needed a bigger world. I fought the Wall of Flesh a total of seven times, one which I didn't record, and honestly, I'm surprised it wasn't more times. Considering how impossible I felt the end of the fight was going to be after seeing this chasing me at 2000 HP, I ended up actually adding the Bone Helm to my accessories, sacrificing another movement item, because I felt like I really needed some more damage, and this is the best thing I came up with. And yeah, screw what I said about not having to build a bridge across the underworld, because damn right I was pulling out all the stops after losing to the wall of flesh six times. For about 60 or 70% of the fight, just using the terrain isn't a big deal, but when the boss gets low on health, you really need to be able to maintain distance from it when using a weapon like this where you're whittling it down the whole time. So I just said what the hell and built a bridge across the entire other half of the world, and wow, that actually worked. There's nothing specific to point out about the trimerang against the wall of flesh matchup here, it's just a slog of a battle, my victory taking about eight and a half minutes. 
minutes. The most important thing is to maintain distance and only close that distance to try and get more consistent hits on the boss when there are very few of the hungry in front of it, as this weapon has quite a difficult time taking them out quickly on its own. And the hungry are the main reason that I needed to add the stinger necklace and bone helm to my setup in the first place because I needed a way to clear them out a little faster, and they are definitely the most problematic part of the fight. But as long as you don't bash up against any walls at bad times, and you don't stray too close to groups of the hungry where they can just bludgeon you around and deal large amounts of damage, then this fight is doable. There's no reason to keep you much longer than that. I don't have many closing thoughts on the Trimarang, as I think its performance has certainly spoken for itself. It's a very cool weapon that, if you really want, can 100% carry you through the entirety of pre-hard mode in all difficulties. That's gonna be all for this one, though. I found this video concept quite fun and might make more of them in the future. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one.